Don Westfall, Dan McCarger back in downtown Mankato for the last time in the regular season. Again, we'll be back here in a couple weeks for the first round of the WCHA playoffs. But Dan McCarger back up here with us. We've got a few highlights to talk about. Big night for the Mavericks. However, it was Michigan Tech drawing first blood. Certainly was, and uh, just a, a great shot, but it was speed. That's what got the Mavericks all weekend long was speed. But the Mavericks came right back just 15 seconds later. It was Dylan Marganeri tying it up at uh, just 15 seconds later at 12-12, uh, I think, of the uh, period. Then a big goal coming up here is John Utsi with just about uh, five seconds left in the period. Got one through from the point, and that gave a Mavericks a lot of momentum going into the second period. Uh, Utsi with a, a great wrister. We don't know still if that deflected off anybody or not, but then here's Leibinger coming out of the box, scoring just at the end of a penalty, and uh, the defense kind of got caught there, but the Mavericks come right back. Nice feed here as Knowles follows the play up off his own rebound behind the net and finds Fogu for his third of the season. That would be the game winner to make it 3-2. And then really apropos here because a guy who'd had some great looks all weekend long, Bryce Gervais finally final, uh, nailed, puts the final nail in the coffin. You know, he, he caught and shot so quickly that Phillips had no opportunity with that whatsoever. Take a quick look at our game summary with the Mavericks winning 4-2 out shooting. Michigan Tech 31 to 20 for the game, 9 to 7 there in that third period play. Mavericks that go by Gervais, a power play tally, so they end up one for three again with the man advantage. Faceoffs, Michigan Tech, not many times teams can come in here and outdraw the Mavericks, but it was Michigan Tech 38 to 31. It ends up being a two goal game, Dan McCarger, but in the end, Maybe one goal might have been a little more apropos. It was a very even contest throughout the weekend, and it would not surprise either one of us if no. these two teams end up playing for not only the regular season, as we just saw, but the postseason tournament championship. Oh, certainly. These are two quality teams, and they've got everything. They've got offense. They've got defense. They've got goaltending. Uh, the Mavericks got the bounce tonight that they needed. They, they just made the, uh, the extra play or two. Uh, it's just a shame we couldn't have figured out a way to get one more goal last evening. That final minute of regulation, a couple opportunities in overtime, or this place would have exploded tonight at the end of regulation as the Mavericks would have had the McNaughton Cup, but uh, I'm feeling pretty confident Friday night they'll be raising that uh, that trophy up in Bemidji. Our player of the game, we had a few out guys obviously to choose from. Stefan Williams played great, had some great saves toward the end of the contest to keep it a two-go game, but we're going to end up giving it to the defenseman Carter Foguth, who had a game-winning goal, his third goal of the season, and we again encourage you that our JPL Real Estate Group player of the game is Carter Foguth. Uh, we would encourage you to reach out to the people on the screen there, both Katie and Kevin Regan. Katie at 507-469-9683 or Kevin at 507-304-2921. JBO Real Estate Group does the little things that makes a big difference. And again, Carter Fogluth, our player of the game. And before we close out the broadcast, so we'll get it pretty quickly as we can here for you. Some of the out-of-town scores to see what has transpired here within the WCHA again tonight. The Mavericks, we know they'll be home for the playoffs. Still yet to be determined who that opponent might be. And we don't know really even tonight the way it sounds because there's still some games going on late uh, out in Alaska Anchorage that might have some bearing on some of these matchups. There. Lake Superior State with their victory is in the playoffs if Alaska Anchorage loses or ties to Bowling Green. You know that. Bemidji and Ferris tied at one in overtime. Alaska and Huntsville tied at three in overtime. North Dakota beat St. Cloud 3-1. Nebraska and UMD skated to an overtime tie again. Nebraska-Omaha won the shootout there for the second night in a row. Denver leading Miami 4-2. It was Michigan over Wisconsin 5-2 for the sweep. They lead the Big Ten by three points. Ohio State swept Penn State this weekend. Vermont and uh, UMass Lowell tied at two in overtime. Notre Dame beats Boston College and Boston beats Northeastern 6-1. So BU wins the title out east. And again, our score here, Mavericks with the win. Again, now up on top of the WCHA standings by three points over Michigan Tech with four points yet to be determined. So a variety of combinations, but really the Mavericks, I'm sure they're going to want to control this themselves. They go up to Bemidji State next weekend and with a win or tie the first night with the tiebreakers all now on their side as they uh, with three wins on the season over Michigan Tech. Mavericks control their own destiny. You can't ask for a better place to be. And uh, again, the nice thing is, as you just talked about with Chase Grant, Mavericks go into Bemidji State with a little bit of an edge because the Beavers did outplay them uh, up a few months to go up in St. Paul for the uh, the championship that night. I got the feeling he remembered that North yeah, Star Cup game. Exactly. So that's that's a big game Friday night. The Maverick, uh, if you look at magic number, the magic number is one. One point for the Mavericks, a loss for uh, Northern next week, or for Michigan Tech next weekend to Northern. Either way, the Mavericks win the WCHA, a tie, the same thing. They get one point next weekend any way they do it, and that's it. So 
we will close out our broadcast with the reminder that after next weekend, we'll be back here the second weekend. We'd rather have you in the building. It might be break for MSU, so there should be tickets remaining. I would encourage you to call down here to the Verizon Wireless Center and get those tickets next week because the Mavericks will be home. Don't know the opponent quite yet, but we hope if you're not in Mankato with us for the game on site, we hope that you will join us here on the Maverick Hockey Weekend as the Mavericks open up the first round of WCHA play. That'll be our next game. We thank you for watching tonight. We thank you for watching this weekend. And again, from the students from Bethany Lutheran College, along with Dan McCarger and Don Westfall. Tonight's final score one more time, Minnesota State Mankato 4, Michigan Tech 2, as the Mavericks one point away from the WCHA Championship. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in a couple weeks.